So let's get back to candidate forums. Paris, you were very busy this week, but also was your colleague, WTTW's Amanda Vinicky, who hosted a forum between two of the three candidates for attorney general. We had Democratic incumbent Kwame Raoul and Republican Tom DeVore. And not surprisingly, a major topic there was eliminating cash bail, the Safety Act. Uh, Paris, give us a rundown. I know you were watching. Yeah, no, and great job to my colleague, Amanda Vinikin. Also, great job to Tinas Fondelis, who, who co-hosted uh, with me last night. The Safety Act is a big uh, point of contention between those two. Uh, you heard in that soundbite, Attorney General Raul say uh, he supports it. He said that there need to be some tweaks. The Democrats look like they are going to get together after the election to sort of tweak the language uh, to get rid of some of the uncertainty and ambiguity there. Tom DeVore, obviously uh, echoing the other states' Republicans, saying that this whole thing is, is a big disaster waiting to happen, that it's going to let uh, dangerous people back on the streets and it's going to increase crime. DeVore really um, kind of built his fame on opposing Pritzker's, you know, COVID mandates, you know, taking Pritzker to court. He utilized that to then um, run for office. One of the so, – so those things were expected, the fact that they were going to differ on that. I thought it was interesting that DeVore – on the question of will you enforce the Chicago Police Department consent decree, which the attorney general has a key role here mm -hmm. in enforcing this, this very big police reform item, DeVore said, of course I would. That sounds to me a little bit more moderate than um, than than others in his party. Uh, so it might be his way of trying to tack to the center a little bit. We sure. know that his, his, aunt, his stance against mask mandates uh, stokes the base. But to to win in Illinois, you, you're going to have to have more than the conservative base and to say something like, well, yes, I would I would continue the road to police reform uh, for the Chicago Police Department. Maybe, maybe you try to pick off a few moderate voters. But again, however much we trust polling, the polling doesn't have that race uh, very okay. close, although like there's such a range in these polls. Like there's a poll that says Governor Pritzker's up by 22 and then another one that says he's up by nine. <laughs> you you just to, don't know. <laughs> you have to be careful because these campaigns will put out their own push polls. And some of that is designed to say, hey, see, look, this race is a mm -hmm. lot closer than we thought. Give us more money. You know, so you just have to be skeptical where these polls are coming. From. Right. Uh, Kim, I want to get your breakdown on about the Safety Act. Tell, tell me a little bit about what that does and for listeners who well, might not be familiar. Sure. Just a little bit of background, though. In 2020, when we were right in the middle of COVID-19 and also this uh, coming off of the George Floyd um, murder, um, it was a time at which uh, the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus really buckled down to try and come up with some ways in which to improve in four areas, criminal justice, uh, economics, health care, and I believe education. Those were four areas. So with criminal justice, they came up with the Safety Act, and it has many provisions. No one talks about any of the rest of them. Right. Um, right. But the one that they talk about is the elimination of cash bail, which mm -hmm. has been a movement across the country with many of the prosecutors coming into office. So this idea of eliminating cash bail so that right now when you if you go before a judge for being accused of some type of crime, the judge can decide to set a, a cash amount that you have to post before you can get out. Um, but in this case, the judge will only no longer can give you a cash bail, but will only decide whether or not you are a threat to society, whether or not you should be let out or should you stay inside of jail, which is something they were supposed to do even before. So it really is not that much of a change. However, it has been skewed and it has been turned into what people are calling a purge law. And, and they're saying that on January 1st, there are going to be all kinds of people let out of jail and not put in jail who are committing murders and crimes and <laughs> sexual assaults. And it, it, it's just the way in which the, the information is being spun out of control about this. The messaging has been just not very good. Is they, People who have been in favor have been playing a lot of catch up with it. Yeah. So, Dave, what's, what's your take on how this uh, race for attorney general is shaping up? Well, I mean, I think these down ballot races, the attorney general, the treasurer, the, the secretary of state, they're all they're all kind of, you know, you see those generic ballot questions that, that you know, are, are you going to vote for a Democratic member of Congress or a Republican member of con Congress? They're a good barometer of where, where where people's political mood is. These down ballot races are that. that that's our version of them in Illinois. Sure. And I think the fact that, you know, you have, you, you know, you, you, you have uh, both Pritzker and you have Duckworth with seemingly these large, large leads 
you know, you, you have to question whether they're going to have coattail effects from from that. And then, you know, you go back to 2020 uh, and even 2016, you look at the presidential performance here that Donald Trump had, and, and he, he just got swamped in both elections. So yeah. the fact that Illinois ha- has this track record of voting Democratic, I don't see anything right now that, that suggests to me that it's going to... Well- no, and I agree with you, Dave, yeah. but the one thing to keep your eye on is turnout. I mean, yeah. turnout could make the difference. Like, you know, Republican base is motivated to turn out and and will uh, Democratic voters in the city and in the suburbs turn out? You know, we see turnout depress when their party is in power. And, you know, right now in terms of early voting uh, in Chicago, the numbers are anemic. I mean, now we just had all the sites in the 50 wards open up, but but it's very, very, very low right now. Well, the flip side of these polls, too, that you have to kind of wonder about, if you're in a campaign and you have a double-digit lead, it's sort of like the yeah. sports analogy of playing with a lead. It's hard to do right. because it, it kind of, uh, you know, it can tamp down enthusiasm. And and that's that's a thing that, that all the campaigns have to be wary. Yeah, absolutely. Right, right. So l- let's talk a little bit about voting, Paris. You just mentioned that, you know, Chicago Open, it's got now, what, 100 voting sites open? Uh, I think it's 52 because you've got one in each ward and then you've okay, got the two super, super sites. Super okay. Site. And, yeah. you, and d- so for early voting, Chicagoans, can, you can go anywhere. Well, for early voting, you can go to, to one of the designated spots in your ward. So depending on what ward, like the 47th ward, the 6th ward, the 5th ward, there's going to be one spot, you know, a library or a school. And as I alluded to before, the, the numbers were like, I guess as of a day or two ago, were like 5,000 early votes. I mean, that is really small. Now, it was only the super site that was uh, available. And there have been a couple, 160,000 mail-in requests, I think, something along that. So that that's a bigger number. But, you know, on election day, um, because of remap, um, the the precincts have changed. Yeah. So folks might be a little confused about where they're supposed to go. Right. There might be uh, a lack of election judges. There might be some bottlenecks, which is more argument to vote early uh, to avoid the, the lines and stuff on actual election day. Right. I, I want to touch a little bit about uh, the Secretary of State race uh, since Jesse White has been in that office for you know the last mm-hmm. 100 years. So um, and top vote getter, right? He is he a top vote getter, absolutely. Yeah. So now you know, Paris. You also uh, hosted a f- candidate forum for two of the three candidates for that office. You were talking with Democrat Alexi Janulius and uh, Republican Dan Brady. So t- tell us briefly the major issues and topics relevant to that that race. How long do I have to wait in line when I'm going <laughs> yes. to get my driver's I license? I hate the that, DMV. That is right. the issue. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the, the Secretary of State's office in Illinois is very interesting. I mean, it oversees so many things. It's a chief record keeper uh, of the state of Illinois. Um, like for reporters, when you want to go in and see like who owns a business or, you know, you go to the Secretary of State's website and they have all that information. It's a chief librarian of the state. The thing that it doesn't do that it does in many other states is is run elections. So it doesn't have a huge role in elections here. So the DMV is or the motor service driver services facilities, I like to say, is is the is the big uh, function here. And they both are kind of in agreement. We want to modernize it. You know, we want to, we want to cut down the lines. We want uh, Janulius has said that you know we want uh, electronic uh, licenses and title. Right. Brady in the past has not agreed with that. Although this week he said, oh yeah, I want to do that too. Uh, so they all they have similar um, ideas to sort of uh, streamline that office. It's it's interesting. The last we heard from Janulius publicly was when he lost that Senate race in 2010 to Mark Kirk. The issues of his family bank that went under came up. The issues of his role as treasurer, um, the Bright Start uh, College Savings Program. There was an investment fund that had lost money. Uh, I mean, it, it was during the recession there. So Janulius has had to kind of defend those old kind of attack lines. Dan Brady. It doesn't. He's a Republican. It doesn't seem like he's, uh, you know, riding the coattails of Darren Bailey. I don't think he's holding hands with Darren Bailey. No. Uh, he's not seeking Trump's endorsement. He's he's kind of been a more kind of establishment. Uh, Illinois Republican says very clearly, of course, Joe Biden won the election. So uh, again, a, a more moderate. I should say that you know, they they're both eminently qualified. I mean, Janulius led. A big state department, the treasurer's office. Dan Brady's been a legislator for 22 years. They both came with very specific ideas of what they want to do. Um, And so it's just a matter of, um, you know, this one might just come down to party lines. You know, Mm -hmm. whether you vote Democrat on the ticket, you'll probably vote for Janulius. Republican, you'll probably vote for Brady. But Brady's trying to get some crossover votes. Yeah. And the secretary of state's office is not that political. All right. And one other point. I'm sorry, I've been talking too long. (laughs) Before Jesse White, 
and he's been there 24 years. Let's remember that this office was a launch pad yes. to Illinois governor. And you have to wonder um, with Janulius whether the, he's he's very ambitious, whether that's what he wants. You're going to command an office. He didn't say that's what he, he wanted. He said, no, that's not what I want. Uh, you're commanding an office of 4,000 workers that in the past, in the distant past, might have been utilized on weekends to go, you know, do political work for you for – so it's very attractive. But it gives you for the that most. Reason. It gives you the most name recognition. Yeah. Sure. Any of the Everybody positions. Everybody sees your name, your name is right. everywhere. And exactly. It's very in very offices. public. But it's so interesting. Like you go back in ancient history when when Jesse White was first running for this office in 1998. You know the, the issues were so different back then because like we, you were talking about corruption yeah. in that office because George Ryan had come out of that office and and it was pay to play and 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 we had the right. the, the Willis crash and right. on and on and it's just so like sedate right now yeah. you know we're just talking about lines which i guess is a good thing yeah it that, is, prim- it that is. primary was not sedate no no, <laughs> no i would love that's right i would yeah. love to keep talking about this but we got to keep moving on uh, i've had a uh, pair of shuts here with me from wttw also kim agowan of wvon and dave mckinney we need to take a short break and then we're going to be back with more of our weekly news recap